Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A voice from behind the flowers. It's great to be here. <laughs> Reading this morning is Isaiah 25, 6 through 9, found on page 573. Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich foods for all people, a banquet of aged wines, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's turn now to Psalms 16. Uh, Psalm 16 is found on page 437. I will read the odd numbers. I could have you read, uh, respond in the even numbers. Psalm 16, page 437. Keep me safe, my God, for I in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones, in whom is all my delight. Those who are Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. Your boundary lines have fallen for me, my voices. Surely I have looked like the I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see the You will make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with the eternal pleasures at your right hand. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Next reading is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11, found on page 933. That is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you firmly hold to the word that I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. As Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me, rather than it is I or they. This is what we preach, and this is what you believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this morning is written in Mark in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
I'll be reading Mark 16, 1 through 8. It's titled The Resurrection. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early, very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they, when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. It always makes me wonder when you put yourself in those lady's shoes, what would we think? You know, it says they were terrified and they told no one. Yeah, they were in a place that it's hard to imagine. But you know what? Jesus was risen. He was risen indeed. Hallelujah. That right there is the proof of who he was. No, it's a great day. One that will be with us forever, just like our reading said. All because Jesus left heaven and came to be with us, be with us as one of us. To prove through faith in him and in our Father in heaven, we will be victorious over death. You know, I think sometimes we forget sometimes that we wouldn't have an Easter morning without a Christmas morning. You know, we celebrated Christmas way back when already. Now we're at Easter. We're moving through like normal. But the birth of Christ was the beginning of his mission for us. And the death of Christ was where he showed us how serious he was on his mission. No. He tells us we'll believe and follow him that he will show us our own Easter morning when it's time. I mean, that is such an important thing to remember. That Easter morning was his, but we'll have ours too. I mean, you've heard me say it many times that everything in the Bible is tied together in perfect order. God has everything mapped out, hooked together. From our victories to our trials and back to our final victory of eternal life. He proves through his son we can trust him. And that's a big thing. Now, going back on our Latin journey, our focus on the early, early years of Jesus' ministry, we saw when many went back and forth on whether they would believe Jesus, whether they could actually accept that he was the Son of God. We heard from Pilate in our, in our drama series, when he asked, who is this Jesus? And you know, he could just never quite figure out, who is this Jesus? You know, I'm not sure if he ever got it. But all we can do is trust in God's will that maybe Pilate got it in the end. We don't know. We can't judge and the Bible doesn't tell us. So we don't, we don't worry about that. No, then we commemorated the highs and lows of Jesus' final days during what we call Holy Week last week. The high of Palm Sunday, where the people were shouting Hosanna, along with the king, and they waved their palm branches, just like we did. And they laid their cloaks on the path as he came into the city. What an exciting moment. You know, it was exciting not only for Jesus, but for the people. 
Then we moved to Monday Thursday, where we listened just like the disciples did, where Jesus gave us a mandate. A mandate on Mandate Thursday, Maundy Thursday. A command to love each other, to humble our hearts, and now to wash each other's feet, and to remember him through a meal that he shared. The meal to give us strength that he's always in us, right here. The meal that we can repeat over and over as believers. You know, that meal was totally for us. <coughs> When you look at the fact that Christ gave us such a gift, even as he was in the beginnings of his greatest trial, the ultimate test of his faith, it's even more impactful. Yeah, that meal we're going to take here a little bit later. You think about that. He was starting out on the hardest road that he would ever have to do. Yet he gave us the gift of a meal. And then we had Good Friday. A day where I said only faith tells us it was a good day. For in our human condition we see it as a horrific ending to a man's life. A tragic death in a tragic way. But as believers in Christ, we know it wasn't the end. It was the new beginning of new life. Again, part of God's plan. How God had it figured out to come together. No, we look at that day. Jesus went to the cross after being tortured and spit on. And what did he do? Remember what he said? He asked the Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can you think of that? I mean, after what he went through? Hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, it reminds you of our world today. We have people doing terrible things in the name of earthly causes. We could be mad at them, we could hate them, we could judge them. But if we're going to follow Jesus' example, we have to say, Father in heaven, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And if we look real deep, they don't know what they're doing. Because it doesn't make sense, does it? So that puts us in Jesus' spot really, really tight. When we can say, Father, forgive me. You know, that's something that came to my heart when I was writing this. And you, I think you've heard me say that many times. That as I'm writing my sermon, the Spirit puts something new on my heart that I don't even plan on. But it was the fact that Jesus was just a man at this point. If just a man is the right term. Yes, we know he was the Son of God. We know the Father was blessing him and guiding him through all of his trials. But in the days leading up to the crucifixion, Jesus was a human like us. That's the point. See, his power to being a God were not in play. That's something important to realize. That Jesus went through all he did just as one of us. Our catechism calls it his humiliation. I told the conference the other night, I call it his humbleization because humiliation in our world has a different meaning now than what was intended in the scripture. Jesus was humbled to become a human when he left heaven. He was made just as we are. But it was to show us how to be humble in front of our God, the creator of the universe. To show us that faith will get us through all the things in life that we call trials. As I said, Jesus is not carrying any privilege of being God on earth. But Jesus was a servant to his Father in heaven. And after he punished, after he suffered the whole punishment for our sin, all the pain and agony for our death, he died and was buried. 
Just like one of us. But then we have this exaltation. Another part where Luther tells us this is how it worked, and it's so amazing how Luther how Luther explained it. His exaltation when his power and over sin and death was restored. Where he was given back his holiness in full. Yes, Jesus went to hell. But it was to show Satan that he had no power over him whatsoever. <coughs> that Jesus was the Son of God. And that Satan should quit trying to tempt him or trying to get others to bring Jesus down because it wasn't going to happen. No, Jesus rose from the dead and returned to heaven to sit at the right hand of God. From that moment on, he was given the authority to judge the living and the dead. That's what today is about. Jesus showing us that if we believe and trust in him and his Father, we too will be risen from this earthly realm and given eternity in heaven. Yeah. We won't be gods, don't don't go get carried away on that. But we'll be God's guests in his heaven. We will be given the glory of our belief, the glory of what we went through to say we are believers. Our Bible tells us we'll be persecuted and tried and, and treated terribly. But if we trust in God, he will give us the glory for all of our, our work and all of our wear. You know, there are days I can't wait to see what's coming. I mean, I've seen the power of God here in my life. Here in this church, here on this earth. I've seen him bring so many through the trials that they, Satan throws at them. I've read the words, how with Jesus as my guide, I will see my Easter morning. What more can I really trust in? What more can I look for? As we come into our world, we say this, we see this day is like many others. Just a day off. Just a day we call a holiday. You know? But our world forgets this is a holiday, which means holy day. And what a holy day it is. And again, we have to ask God to forgive them for they know not what they do. See how that fits over and over in our lives? How when the devil gets people off on his schemes, where they, he gets people to forget what it's all about, people don't know what they're doing. And they've got to have God's power and God's spirit back in their hearts to understand. No. I must share, I've done two celebrations of life in the last two weeks. And as I told both groups, it's a celebration of life. You have some of this life, you know, it's great to remember, great to talk about what happened. But it's more about the life to come. It's more about the life that we're going to see. Because we don't lose our loved ones if they're believers in God. We don't lose them They've moved on to the place that we're waiting to go. For God is very clear in Scripture. Romans 8, 37 and 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, that's our scripture. It's because Jesus who he is who he says he is. We don't have to worry, we don't have to wonder. If Jesus tells us this is how it is, it's going to happen. Because nothing can separate us from him. Nothing can separate us from him. No, we just need to believe 
Trust and follow his words. For what else can we look for in this life but to see an Easter morning of our own? To open our eyes to the glory of heaven. Because Jesus Christ gave us the way. Long live the King. He is risen. He is still risen indeed. That we can't forget that He is still risen. It didn't just happen and He went away. He's still with us every day of the week. He's in our hearts. He's in our lives. No. To say happy and blessed Easter to all, again, seems kind of small. To say glory be to God for what He's given us on this Easter morning. That we can't understand the, the blessings that we have to distrust is more what to say. Uh, but blessed Easter to all. Uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Jesus, you rose this morning. You rose this morning to show us that our Father in heaven is absolutely almighty, omnipotent, trustworthy. Every perfect word we can think of. And you went through what you did to show us that we too, as human beings, will have the same glory if we follow. That's why you were, you were who you were. Because if you didn't become one of us, the skeptic could say, well, he was, he was God anyway. But Lord Jesus, you took that away from him by saying, I am a human being just like you. Follow my steps and I'll take you right to heaven. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for being our guide. Thank you for just giving us faith and hope and everything we need to have joy in our world. Lord Jesus, we, we can't wait to see you again in person. But until then, we will just ask you to stay in our hearts and continue to guide us. And we pray this all in your holy name.